Roses, it's Sugar Rose Studios. And today I'm gonna to be talking all about airbrushing, what you need, the materials, and I'm gonna be making a separate video on specifically like using your airbrush and cleaning it. But for this video, it's just gonna be the materials, the setup, and what to get and what to avoid. So first of all, my advice to you is do not try to buy the least expensive airbrush because it was not a good idea for me. So my first airbrush was actually a handheld airbrush and you can buy these off of Amazon and you can be they can be charged using a USB. And I thought this would be a good option and it was not. It did not work well. It was it was really annoying to be like airbrushing and then have it die, have the battery die. Overall, I would just really not recommend this for model horses. I ended up buying a master airbrush off of Amazon for $30 in the first, the first airbrush that I got. And I was like, wow, this is great. Like I have such a cheap airbrush and it's gonna work just fine. No, purple airbrush, it did not work well. It spattered everywhere. And I think a part of the issue was I was also using an incorrect airbrush paint. So I'll talk about a little bit about that as well later in the video but this airbrush was terrible it did not work well and you really can't cheap your way out of buying a good airbrush if you want to have good results the more expensive your airbrush for the most part the better it's going to be i bought both of the airbrushes that i have right now which are both sparmax i bought them off of spray gunner which is a website that sells airbrushes i really recommend them they have great customer service um there are a bunch of different types of airbrushes um, a lot of people in the model horse community use Iwata um, and Iwata Eclipse. For me personally though, that airbrush was just out of my budget. It, I think they range from like 100 to like 300 or more. And that was something I just was not really willing to invest. Although now, like if I was really to go and do like equine art forever, which I'm not, that would be something that you probably need to invest in. So also when you're buying an airbrush, they have kind of random numbers next to them. So what do that, does that mean? So that's the size of your needle and the bigger the needle, the bigger the amount of flow. So I have two different airbrushes. One of them is like the main one that I use is the 3.5 millimeter one and that is pretty good coverage. So larger than that, you're gonna get more coverage. I say 3.5 is like around the average size. And then the smallest that I've like been able to find is like 1.8, but for some reason the one 1.8 one that I saw was very expensive. So I ended up getting a two um, millimeter one. And this is also a Sparmax airbrush. I tried a different brand before, but something you'll realize is that once you get a brand and you really start like, every single mechanism of and like the amount of force that it's going to take for you to pull back on this trigger is going to be different based on what brand you buy so if you start getting used to a brand and you switch to a different brand it's going to be really confusing for you and your muscle memory because what an airbrush is is that for most of them you're going to want to get a dual action if you're doing model horses i would 100 percent recommend dual action so that means that you have the air coming in and you can push down to have the air come out and then you pull back to basically control the amount of paint coming out so if you pull all the way back then all of the then the paint is going to come all the way out but if you just like press and pull back a little bit then only a little bit of the paint is going to come out and that's how you can create those really beautiful gradients when you're also looking on their website or any other airbrush website, you'll find that there are different types of airbrushes. So this is a gravity fed airbrush. So basically means that you put the paint in this cup and it will feed down. I really like this personally. Some people do not and they use other methods. There's something like a side cup that's a that it's on the side. And I believe there are a few other ones like a siphon fed one, but I think in my opinion, I really like the gravity fed ones but it's basically personal preference so now that you have your airbrush you're going to need a air pump this is a master airbrush air pump i think it's like 30 or 50 dollars on amazon um and it connects to this type of like thingy mabob that connects to the bottom of your airbrush so you just screw it on like this 
one thing I think for the Badger airbrushes or the Poche airbrushes, I can't remember, the con this connection is different. So you just make sure that before you buy them, you know that the connection for the airbrush to the hose is correct. So this is a hose that connects to the air pump. And I don't know if this one has a lot of different pressures. I don't really know if you can adjust the pressure on this one, but it's worked fine for me. So I don't know if you really need something that's super fancy because this has worked great and I've used it for a really long time. Also very important things that you need to buy if you're buying an airbrush are a lot of different cleaning t tools after every single time you use an airbrush you need to clean it if you do not clean your airbrush every single time this investment that you have made will literally be destroyed and degraded after every single time you need to clean it you need to keep it in really pristine condition and really clean it well after you use it every single time and before you put it away um so another thing is once you take off so this is like the back end of the airbrush so this twists off and then you have this piece here which basically holds the needle into, pl into place and this is what moves the needle back and forth. So when the needle is all the way back, that's how all the paint comes out of the front hole. So when you unscrew this, the needle comes out. So you, this needle, you really need to be careful with. You can buy replacement needles, but you know, they're money. So try to keep the ones that you have working well. You don't ever want to like bend the tip or anything, but you do need to clean it. So you always have to clean that part. You have to take out the needle, clean it, and then you always have to clean out the cup. So the cup is where you put in the paint. And then I always take off this part, which is just the front nozzle. Um, there's two pieces that are like different. There's this piece here and then the piece right behind it. And um, I always take those out and clean it. And once I have the needle out, I clean the front of it with a Q-tip just to make sure that none of the paint is like blocking the area, if that makes sense. And on most airbrush websites or other airbrush places, you can find some sort of like little cleaning mabobs that will help you a lot. Now that you have your airbrush and air pump, numbers of things, I don't know what's happening. Something else that you're going to be needing is airbrush paint. So do not try and cheap yourself out on this one. Just like an airbrush, you need good airbrush paint if you want good results. One of the reasons that I was so annoyed with airbrushing in the beginning was because I was using just acrylic paint and I was using like apple barrel acrylic paint and I was putting it in my airbrush. Big mistake. These paints are like a lot of different acrylic paints are not meant for an airbrush. You have to have high flow, like very low viscosity, like almost liquid, these kind of are liquid paints that are very pigmented. And these you can put directly into the airbrush and they will come out. So I really love this brand. It's Model Air by Vallejo. And I love this company. I have a ton of different paints from them. Um, and these are Ammo um, MIG. I also really like these, this brand, actually more than Vallejo brand. Um, these actually have like a little stirring ball in them. So when you shake it up, there's also a little ball shaking the paint around. And I find that they have some really nice like brown colors and like chestnut colors that you don't often have with the Model Air colors. Another thing about the Vallejos is that they come in a bunch of different sets. However, I would 100% not recommend buying those sets at all because I bought like three of those sets and half of the colors for model horses are unusable because these are sets that are made for miniaturists and a lot of miniaturists do stuff for like army tank stuff, like they want to make battlefield stuff. So a lot of the stuff is camo colored. So it's like brown or blue or metallic and shiny and like you're a majority of the time not going to be using green for a model horse or like blue or bright red. So even though it may not seem like it's the best choice to get them individually, you really should get them individually, even though it might be like if you buy a box of like, I don't even know how much that is, 16, like you're gonna get a bunch of colors that you're not even gonna use. So it's not even worth buying it like that. 
So one bottle of airbrush paint ranges from I think three to four dollars. They can be a little bit more and they really aren't any less than that. Uh, so they're very expensive. I do have to say though, they don't, they take a pretty long time to go through. But I mean, yet again, I am using Schleich models and I also don't do base coats with acrylic. I do base coats with normal acrylics. I don't do them with airbrush paint. So I save money that way. But if you were to just use airbrush paint, especially on like traditional size models or classic size models, you're gonna go through a lot more luck more quickly and they are expensive. You can try to make your own airbrush paint. It's pretty difficult though. I would not recommend it, especially for beginners. I do not do it because it's easier for me and I don't have to be frustrated about it and it doesn't take the fun out of actually doing it in the first place. Something that you should also consider getting is airbrush flow improver. It really, the brand doesn't matter, but I have this and just in case your paint gets clunky or anything, I just pour a, like a drop or two into my paint and it will make the flow of the paint kind of like go through the airbrush a little bit easier. Although you have to be pretty careful with using this because you don't want it to get too watery and then your paint will not be pigmented and it will be like splattery and watery and gross. Some good colors if you're going to be getting Vallejo paints are definitely the ones that I use the most are mahogany, white, black, um, and some different shades of gray. And those are like some really important colors. I also wanted to note that it is a really, really steep learning curve. Like when you start out airbrushing, it's probably not going to look very good. It takes a long time for you to get used to the feel of an airbrush and understand how layering different colors can create different effects. Stay tuned for a video about how to airbrush. Uh, this was more of a materials video. If you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, please, this sweet, generous person that you are, like this video, subscribe to my channel, and go check out my website. I have model horses that are customized for sale, and you can fill out a form to get your own personalized one as well. I also have tack and some other retired models. And don't forget to stay sweet. Mwah!